Liar by Justine Labrelestier. From my father, John Byrne. Part one, promise. I was born with a light covering of fur. After three days, it had all fallen off, but the damage was done. My mother stopped trusting my father because it was a family condition he had not told her about. One of many omissions and lies. My father is a liar, and so am I. But I'm going to stop. I have to stop. I will tell you my story, and I will tell it straight. No lies, no omissions. That's my promise. This time, I truly mean it. After. When Zach isn't in school Tuesday morning, I'm worried. He said he'd call me Monday night, but he didn't. Friday night was the last time I saw him. That isn't usual. Zachary Rubin is my boyfriend. He isn't the best boyfriend in the world, but he usually does what he says he will. If he was going to skip school, he'd have taken me with him. We could have gone running in the park or ridden around on the subway all day laughing at the crazies, which is mostly everyone. Once, we walked from the Staten Island Ferry all the way up to Inwood, right next to the big hospital and the bridge that leads to the Bronx. It took us all day. We'd get sidetracked, checking things out, looking around, enjoying the novelty of walking instead of running. Broadway was our path north through the island. Zach said it used to be an Indian trail, which made it the oldest street in Manhattan. That's why it twists and turns and sometimes on the diagonal, sometimes straight like an avenue. Me and Zach had had an argument about what the water under the bridge of the Bronx was called. Was it the Hudson or the East River? Or did they meet in the middle under the bridge? Whatever it was called, the water was gray-brown and nasty-looking. So it could have been either one. That was our best day together. I hope Zach isn't doing anything that cool without me. I'll kill him if he is. I eat lunch on my own, a cold steak sandwich. The bread is gray and wet, soggy with meat juice. I eat the steak and throw the rest away. In class, I stare at the window, watch the reflection of my classmates superimposed in mottled glass over gray steel bars. I think about what Zach looks like when he smiled at me. After. The second day, Zach isn't at school, I wear a mask. I keep it on for three days. I forge a note from my dad to say I have some gruesome rash and the doctor told me to keep it covered. I carry the note with me from class to class. They all buy it. My dad bought me the, brought me the mask back from Venice. It's black leather painted with silver and unfurls at each corner like a fern. The silver is real. Under it, my skin itches. They tell us Zach is dead during third period on Thursday. Principal Paul Jones come into our classroom. He isn't smiling. There are murmurs. I hear Zach's name. I look away. I have bad news, the principal says unnecessarily. I can smell the bad news all over him. Now we all look at him. Everyone is quiet. His eyes are slightly red. I wonder if he's going to go to all the classes or just us seniors. Surely we would be first. Zach is a senior. I can hear the minute hand of the clock over the whiteboard. It doesn't tick, it clicks. Click, 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 click. No ticks, no talks. There's a fly in the room. The fan slices through the air. A murky sliver of sunlight cuts, cuts across the front of the classroom, right where the principal is standing. It makes visible the dust in the air, the lines around his eyes, across his forehead, at the corners of his mouth. Sarah Washington shifts in her care, chair and its legs squeak painfully loud across the wooden floor. I turn, stare at her. Everybody else does too. She looks away. Zachary Rubin is no longer missing. His body has been found. Principal Paul's lips move into something between a grimace and a snarl. A sound moves across the classroom. It takes me a moment to realize that half the girls are crying. A few of the boys too. Sarah Washington is rocking back and forth, her eyes enormous. Mine are dry. I take off the mask.